<laughs> Hi, and welcome back to the Ascension Playground. This is Ursi. Okay, today we get to talk about the final fourth royal star, Antares, the fourth royal star. So we've traveled with this idea of what are the four royal stars of Persia, and then how do they hold up the heavens, the four of them? So far, we've covered Regulus, Fomalhaut, and Aldebaran. And today, we're going to talk about Antares. So without further ado, let me share my screen. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. I brought us back to the beginning of the four royal stars and this compass point. This um, information comes from starseedsteachable.com by Julia Balaz. I just get so inspired by some of her classes that I can't help but just come out and talk and share this with you. Okay, the four royal stars. If this is your first time tuning in, I wanted to share with you that each of these four stars represents a particular time of the year. So Aldebaran, will focus on and begin with the spring, with the vernal equinox. And it is associated then with Antares, the opposite of the fall or autumn equinox. And then Regulus holds up the summer solstice and Fomalhaut, the other fixed star, royal star, the winter solstice. So see how this works? You've got four fixed stars holding up the heavens and helping us navigate through time of the sun. They actually used it to help them in the ancients with the lunar phases as well. This time we'll be talking about the fixed royal star Antares. And as you can see, it's going to carry the beautiful archangelic energy of Uriel, watcher of the west. And the element that is associated with Antares is water. In particular, this color that's, that Antares holds is the metaphor of the golden ray of light. Isn't that exciting? I just, you know, this is like building story upon story upon story to suddenly get this almost woven fabric for 2022. Because what does it mean today? And this is where if you decide to look at your, the free online calculator at galacticastrochart.com, you can go find out, do I have Antares or one of the other four royal stars in my chart? And if not my chart, how about my child or my significant other or my family members, brother, sister, parents, if you happen to know the time of birth? That's the key part that a lot of times it's harder to find. Okay, well, let me share my screen. Okay, so here's the slide that I created, Antares. It's a royal star in the constellation Scorpius. That's the official name for Scorpio, the um, zodiacal sign. So Scorpius, this beautiful star is placed in what we call the heart of the scorpion. Interesting, right? We've got the eye of the bull, the red eye of the bull um, in a previous star, or the mouth of a fish. So <laughs> it's just interesting how they, they moved through, um, or the heart of a lion, um, where these beautiful stars, how they make the animals come to life in the constellation. Well, the scientific term for this beautiful star is Alpha Scorpi. Again, Alpha, the brightest star within the constellation Scorpius. And as I mentioned earlier, Archangel Uriel is associated with this star, and, and it is known as the Watcher of the West. So of the four guardians who are guarding north, south, east, and west, this one holds the golden ray, or sometimes it moves towards yellow or purple, the other side of the spectrum of gold. Its element is water, and the best times to meditate with Antares 
if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, is on December 1st during the day or on June 1st during the evening. And if you're located in the Southern Hemisphere, work with Antares on December 1st in the evening or June 1st in the morning. Now, I put a little note on the bottom of this slide that says, note, it's a red supergiant star, supergiant. Remember how I showed you how large Aldebaran is? Well, this is the star beyond the sun. And if you've ever done yoga, you know, a lot of times in yoga, we go the sun beyond behind the sun, you know, so it's the star behind the sun. Who knows if it's Antares, right? But the heart of the scorpion. Now, if you know the metaphor of Scorpio, it's the only triphasic sign of the 12 zodiacal signs, right? So it starts off as a scorpion. Then I believe it moves into, as it transcends, into an eagle. And later, after death and then rebirth, it's reborn as a phoenix. But here we see the constellation Scorpius, this huge, super giant star. You know, it's able to hold that whole, you know, scorpion to eagle to phoenix. It is ablaze. Okay. Oops. Let me move now to my next slide. Mm -hmm. Oop. There we are. Here's the little picture of the scorpion. You can see when you look at the placement for north, we're really looking at it sideways. But next to Scorpius is Sagittarius. And here's Ophiuchus coming in on the side with Libra and Lupus. These are other constellations that sit around the constellation Scorpius, the scorpion. So the heart of the scorpion, Antares. Pretty amazing. So I wanted to show you that graphic, and then we'll move to this one. Okay, so what does it mean if you have this fixed star in your chart? I mean, if it's this huge super giant star, and here it's located, you can see how this galactic view of Scorpius you really, really does look like it's in the heart. What does it mean if it's in your chart? Okay, so this is what it means. Based on what Julia Blas and some of her findings and research, I've reduced it down to a few paraphrasing, and that is, Let's say uh, someone's born with Antares conjunct their sun, the strongest light, the sun, S-U-N. Um, you could then anticipate this child becoming an incredible and excellent strategist, a long-term planner. When you look at Archangel Uriel, this image I have here from Diana Cooper's card deck, Uriel just happens to be carrying a scroll, right? And long-term planning. Look how this beautiful eagle soars for the and seeing the bigger picture. Again, if you're if you have this beautiful royal star Antares in your natal chart, you may consider how do I hold this vision of higher ideals and potentials? Have I embraced it or am I kind of tucking it away and storing it for later. Now here's the interesting part. Look at this. If you have an activated Antares or a sensitive point in your chart, you may be able to attune to other higher realm beings such as dun, 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 the Ascended Masters Collective or other galactic beings. Okay, imagine that. I know we all have access but I think if you have a, a great placement for Antares in your natal chart, you might just have the VIP pass where you don't have to wait in line and wait for access to the Ascended Masters. Again, going back to the points, you might also be excellent at holding space for others, you know, to heal and transform because of this bigger vision, because of the longer term planning. You might be able to hold space for others who might be short-term, um, going from one drama to the next. Lastly, one of the other key elements for Antares would be anchorers. They're anchoring energy for bringing higher dimensional frequencies to Earth. Made me think of like light workers, 
There are so many of us who may self-identify as light workers, but these are the anchors holding space for light workers. <laughs> Let me show you my last slide. Here we go. So in, in summary, you can see we have Regulus in the constellation Leo. We have Taurus with the Aldebaran and the red eye of the, of the bull. We have another red star in the open mouth of the fish, Fomalhaut, in the constellation Pis Piscis Austrinus, <laughs> not to be confused with Pisces. And then we just mentioned the heart of the scorpion, Antares. You put these four together, you hold up the heavens, you meditate with those dates that I've given in this little mini series, and look at this beautiful image right in the center. You can sit, open your chakras, allowing the light and the downloads to pour in and your light and love to move upward and outward. Well, I've had so much fun. Here's my last final, final end to end slide. Here we go. And here I'm basically saying again, giving tribute to Julia Balaz with her starseedsteachable.com, thanking Diana Cooper for her beautiful Archangel Oracle card deck, and of course, The Box of Stars by Catherine Tennant. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And then, of course, you know me. I'm Ursi on the Ascension Playground. It's just such a joy. I've never opened these boxes of stars and learned the stories of the stars. So in the chat box below, if you like learning about the heavens and the stars and perhaps some of the narrative as it relates to colors, um, direction, archangels, or other ascended beings, let me know. Give me some feedback. Tell me how you enjoyed it or what areas you'd like to see improved. I'm open, but thanks for playing with me on the Ascension Playground. Again, Thanks again for subscribing, liking, or even sharing, because when we hit that 501st subscriber, party! Okay, have a wonderful and blessed day, and see you next time on the Ascension Playground. Bye for now. <laughs>